Before each Starship launch, SpaceX must secure clearance from regulatory bodies, like the FAA. But what if I told you there was a way to bypass much of that red tape? An over 120-meter-tall space rocket ignites and begins its ascent into the sky. The roar from its 33 powerful engines is deafening. So loud, in fact, that even at a distance of 4 kilometers, the sound levels are high enough to cause hearing damage. But no one is that close, because this launch doesn't happen on land. Instead, the massive rocket lifts off from a floating platform out at sea. The only people who hear the noise are the crew aboard a support vessel 10 kilometers away. And even then, it's just a distant rumble. Yes, what I'm suggesting here is launching starships from the sea. However, reducing noise isn't the only benefit of moving the launch site from land to the ocean. The most obvious benefit is safety. When a launch takes place over dry land, an expendable rocket will jettison its lower stage after burnout, which then falls back to Earth. This has been a particular issue in China, where many rockets are launched from inland spaceports. On several occasions, rocket debris has fallen on nearby villages, posing serious risks to residents. One of the most tragic incidents occurred in 1996, when a Long March 3B rocket veered off course and killed at least six people. Even with reusable rockets, there's always a chance something could go wrong. If the rocket were to fail mid-flight and experience a rapid unscheduled disassembly, RUD, debris could be scattered across populated areas. Launching from the ocean dramatically reduces this risk by ensuring that any falling parts land safely in the sea. When rockets launch from typical sites, they're restricted from flying over populated areas for safety reasons, so they usually head out over the ocean. This limits the range of orbital paths they can take. For missions to geostationary orbit, rockets need to launch directly above the equator and travel in the same direction as Earth's rotation. Although we don't feel it, the Earth is spinning incredibly fast, especially at the equator, which is the farthest point from Earth's axis. There, everything is moving at around 1,674 kilometers per hour as the planet makes one full rotation each day. This means that the rocket spends much more of its fuel just getting down to the equator. Launching from a mobile sea platform, however, eliminates these geographic constraints. It allows rockets to be launched from anywhere, making it easier to reach the optimal orbital path. The fuel saved by avoiding complex maneuvers can instead be used to carry a heavier payload into space, improved safety, the potential to carry heavier payloads, and less bureaucratic oversight from agencies like the FAA. These are all awesome advantages that could be achieved simply by launching Starship from the ocean. In fact, offshore launch platform is actually something SpaceX once intended to do. In 2020, SpaceX acquired two oil rigs, later renaming them Phobos and Deimos after the moons of Mars. Although the rigs originally cost $515 million to build, SpaceX purchased them for just $3.5 million each taking advantage of a steep discount as the previous owner, Valorous, was on the brink of bankruptcy. Now, let's take a closer look at the rigs SpaceX recently acquired. These are semi-submersible oil platforms, originally built in 2005 by an engineering firm called Ensco. With a main deck measuring approximately 73 meters by 78 meters, they don't rest on the ocean floor like traditional rigs. Instead, they float on large pontoons submerged below the water's surface, which provides added stability. Typically, these platforms are anchored to the seabed using cables, but they can also use dynamic positioning systems, powered by water jet thrusters, and controlled by onboard computers to maintain their location with precision. Notably, platforms built since the late 1980s, including these, are engineered to withstand even Category 5 hurricanes, according to the National Industries Association. In theory, that makes them a promising foundation for a floating launch and landing site for rockets. Resilient, stable, and mobile. But how exactly will SpaceX convert these oil rigs to support the launch and landing of starships? Before SpaceX can begin customizing these rigs for Starship operations, they'll first need to dismantle much of the existing infrastructure that was originally used for drilling. 
Removing equipment from an oil rig is a costly but routine part of its decommissioning once it reaches the end of its operational life. By mid-2021, the deck of Phobos had already been partially cleared, and work on its counterpart, Deimos, began around March 2022. For Starship operations, SpaceX will need to create a large open area to serve as a landing pad, build a tank farm to store propellants, and install a heavy-duty crane, or something like the Mechazilla that's capable of lifting and stacking Starship vehicles. One of the most prominent features on the rig is the large central tower, known as the Derrick. It was originally used to support heavy drilling equipment. At first glance, it might seem like an ideal structure to repurpose as a base for a massive lifting crane. However, directly beneath the derrick is the moon pool, a large opening in the platform used during drilling operations. During launches, the thrust generated by Starship's engines will be incredibly powerful. SpaceX will want to channel that energy downward into the ocean, where it can be absorbed safely rather than risk damaging the platform. It seems likely that the moon pool will be repurposed for this exact purpose, with the launch mount built directly above it, allowing the rocket's engines to fire into the water below. Although the plan sounded promising, progress on both rigs came to an abrupt halt in early 2022. It wasn't until February 2023 that we finally received a significant update on the floating launch platforms, and unfortunately, it wasn't good news. SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell confirmed that the company had not only paused the project, but had actually sold the oil rigs altogether. The reason was straightforward. At the time, Starship was still in the early stages of development, and the company needed to concentrate all its resources on getting the vehicle to fly reliably. Building and operating a sea-based launch platform would have added unnecessary complexity and distractions. In short, it just wasn't the right move for SpaceX at that stage. So, is it a good idea to bring those oil rigs back now? Maybe. While Starship Block 2 is still facing some challenges, it's likely those issues will be resolved in the near future. Reacquiring and converting the rigs into offshore launch platforms would take time, but if SpaceX were to start the process now, they might be ready just in time for when Starship becomes fully operational. And we're just talking about a platform for Starship to take off from. For landing the ship on the sea, we could also utilize autonomous spaceport drone ships to assist. Drone ship landings are being used with great success on SpaceX's Falcon 9. Well, why not try it on Starship? But before that, please subscribe to help us reach 5,000 subscribers. This milestone will be a great motivation for us. Thanks. And let's get back to the topic. Of course, landing Starship on a drone ship would require significant modifications. The original landing platform on the first barge, just read the instructions, measured 52 by 91 meters. That size was designed to accommodate the Falcon 9's landing legs, which span about 18 meters. But for Starship, the platform would need to be much larger. Currently, autonomous spaceport drone ships, ASDS, are positioned in the ocean by tugboats with a support ship stationed nearby. However, due to the sheer size of a future Starship-capable drone ship and the added weight after landing, towing it with a tugboat may no longer be practical. Instead, the drone ship would likely be equipped with its own propulsion system, enabling it to autonomously navigate to and from its designated position. Like existing ASDS, it would also have thrusters at each corner to maintain a fixed position during landing, allowing Starship to precisely target the deck. But there's another challenge, wave motion. Super Heavy is extremely tall, making it more susceptible to rocking and instability while standing on deck. To address this, the ship would need something similar to Falcon 9's Octagrabber, only much larger, to secure and stabilize Starship after landing. In addition, to withstand the heat of the Raptor engine, the drone ship will also be equipped with a cooling system that is powerful enough to protect the surface of the ship helping to minimize its need for refurbishment. Using both a drone ship and an offshore platform offers several advantages. Landing on the drone ship first helps reduce the risk of damaging the sea platform during touchdown. It also provides flexibility. A mobile landing site means the vehicle can be transported either to the platform or back to land if it requires refurbishment. Having a transportable option like this adds convenience and efficiency 
to the overall recovery and turnaround process. Now, obviously, launching and landing a rocket at sea comes with its own set of challenges. There are reasons that Rocket Lab CEO Peter Beck once remarked, marine assets suck. Transporting the massive ship and its booster to the platform is no small task. This isn't like moving a Falcon 9 on a floating platform, and even those have tipped over while at sea. Consider this. Would it even be possible to transport a starship with an integrated payload? Many of the components we send into space are extremely fragile and can't afford to be tossed around in the waves atop a giant rocket. Then the fuel has to go out there too. All those cryogenic liquids like liquid methane and oxygen need to be stored in specialized containers and safely transferred to the offshore tank farm, which we would also need to construct. The heat from the rocket could essentially boil the ocean directly beneath the floating platform, which would affect its buoyancy. Hot water is less dense than cold water, so the change in temperature could alter the platform's displacement. We can't say exactly how much without running detailed simulations, but it's something that would need to be thoroughly modeled before moving forward. There's also an environmental concern. Boiling the ocean beneath the platform would essentially pasteurize the water, killing any marine life in the area, which definitely isn't something you'd want happening every time you launch a rocket. On top of that, the rocket would kick up a massive spray of seawater, soaking everything nearby and creating a serious corrosion problem. You might consider installing a flame diverter, like those used on traditional launch pads, to redirect the exhaust. But on a floating platform, redirecting the thrust could actually cause the entire structure to shift, and you probably don't want your launch pad drifting sideways at the moment of liftoff. While there are certainly many challenges, they're not the kind that demands groundbreaking scientific breakthroughs. Rockets have long been capable of launching from more than just land. In fact, several countries, such as China, and initiatives like Sea Launch, are actively developing and utilizing ocean-based launch platforms. Recently, China successfully launched a Geelong 3 solid rocket from a mobile sea platform late Sunday, deploying 10 Sena Space Navigation Enhancement satellites into orbit. The Geelong 3 was developed by the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, standing approximately 31 meters tall and weighing around 140 tons at liftoff. Geelong 3 is designed to deliver 1,560 kilograms to a 500 kilometer sun synchronous orbit. For this mission, that capacity was slightly increased to 1,600 Kandors Tigers. The launch took place from the Haiyang Eastern Spaceport, a dedicated facility for sea-based launches. The spaceport has already conducted six sea launches in 2024, and plans are underway for more than 10 launches in 2025. According to recent reports from Chinese media, officials aim to scale operations dramatically, targeting 100 launches per year, starting in 2027. As the frontrunner in commercial spaceflight, SpaceX is unlikely to overlook this opportunity of launching rockets from the sea. In the future, I fully expect to see Starship not only launch, but also land regularly from ocean platforms as well as traditional land-based sites.